We are not uh, planning to attack Russia. We're not interested in Russian Federation. We're not fighting on their territory. We have the war on our territory. They came to our country. We want to de-block our cities. And for that purpose, we need MLRS with the uh, effective range of fire of over 100 kilometers. All right, that is Ukrainian President Zelensky speaking to our Rob Schmidt in an exclusive interview at the Presidential Palace in Kyiv. Zelensky speaking about the current state of the war and what Ukraine needs. For reaction, we welcome our panelists in. We have Republican strategist and vice president of TAG strategy, Strategies, Aaron Perini, author of Lockdown, the Socialist Plan to Take Away Your Freedom, Cheryl Chumley. Also with us is Newsweek opinion editor and host of The Josh Hammer Show, Josh Hammer. Good to see all of you here. Aaron, let me start with you. I'll just go right, right through it with you here. Um, your thoughts on the latest aid package, $40 billion, that's already done. Now you've got $700 million sending over medium-range rocket systems and other um, weaponry to Ukraine. Um, what are your thoughts? What goes through your mind um, when you see these aid packages continue to be sent, as I believe, as reported by the Times, that this would be the 11th aid package of some form to Ukraine? Well, first and foremost, Rob did an excellent job in that interview with uh, Zelensky. But to your question here on what I believe with these aid packages, it shows the fact that our European allies need to step up more. In that interview with Zelensky that Rob did, you heard him talk about Zelensky, about how they are really kind of the line to hold Russia from continuing what uh, Putin believes will be a rebuilding of the USSR type uh, European situation. And so you see them trying to provide a line and trying to provide a standstill and maintain their sovereignty and their territory. I have deep respect for Henry Kissinger, but I disagree with him. Zelensky should not be at this point being willing to give concessions to Putin. And all we have seen from Biden and from this administration is them capitulating to Vladimir Putin. You saw it with Nord Stream 2. You saw it with the Biden administration reportedly talking about that uh, Zelensky should cede territory before the war began. Nothing is making Putin happier than our strategy of appeasement when it comes to actually being able to provide Zelensky. We're always, oh, Biden's always hedging bets, hedging bets, because their strategy on foreign policy right now is one of, they believe they have a communications failure and not a policy failure. Biden needs to get our allies together to make sure Ukraine has the resources necessary to maintain their sovereignty. We have that moment about the question of of ceding territory. Let's play that for the viewers and then Cheryl, I'll go to you. Here's that. How do you negotiate with Vladimir Putin and are you willing to cede any territory to Russia to end this war? And that's why the, the yeah. negotiations could be uh, there, but there has to be a sense, there has to be a willingness on the part of Russia to have those negotiations so we are not ready to accept any ultimatums and any seeds with regards to their territories. We are not interested in what is happening in Russia. We are only interested in our own territory in Ukraine. Cheryl, I'm curious to know if you have somewhat of a different take um, on this. You think back in Crimea, essentially it was just taken at this time. Um, Russia, we, we spoke with one of the congressmen that speaks on the Foreign House uh, Affairs Committee, um, the House Foreign Affairs Committee, uh, says that Russia is not spending nearly as much as Ukraine is um, in, in this war. Uh, but yet again, uh, you have that response there from Zelensky. Your thoughts, Cheryl? Well, my response to what Zelensky was saying to um, Rob Smith's question was that uh, I agree that Ukraine shouldn't be conceding anything to Russia. They're not the aggressors here. Russia is. But at the same time, I think it's time that America take a little breather about rushing all this aid to Ukraine, 40 billion cents, uh, 40 billion passed as an aid package to Ukraine over the opposition of 11 uh, senators, Republican senators, and I think it was something like 57 Republican House members. So that's a done deal. And then on top of it, you have Joe Biden's White House now giving these munitions, these precision rockets to Ukraine with capabilities to strike up to 49 miles, which isn't as far as Zelensky wanted. But the language that went along with the, the, um, the giving of those rockets yeah. was a little bit concerning to me because it, we're supposed to rely on his promise that he won't strike inside Russia. And I just wonder what the end game is here for America. What constitutes enough of a victory that 
that we step back. Josh, I have only 30 seconds for you, but your final thoughts. Henry Kissinger here is right. I think Vladimir Zelensky is wrong. Look, I understand the impulse to compare everything to World War II, to compare everything to Hitler ceding the Sudetenland or, and all that. I understand that impulse, but the liberal internationals, the neoconservatives here are wrong. From a U.S. national security perspective, it is frankly not of great import whether the Donbass region is controlled by Ukraine or Russia. Here we have 40-year high inflation. We have a poor southern border, yeah. critical race theory running amok. There are so many problems here on the home front. This is a misplaced priority these $40 billion, these rockets going overseas. Josh Hawley wrote an op-ed last week that this aid package treats Ukraine as a quote-unquote client state of the United States. He is correct. It is not. We should not treat it as such. All right, I appreciate your time. Aaron Perini, Cheryl Chumley, Josh Hammer. Obviously, this is getting a lot of opinion. We do appreciate you coming on and sharing yours.